The classroom was already in its usual pre-lecture hum when the door suddenly flew open with a force that silenced the room. The students froze mid-conversation as a figure stepped in, Daniel. Late as always, but this time something was different. His usual slouch was gone. His backpack slung carelessly over one shoulder like an afterthought. His eyes sharp, focused, as if he were seeing the room in a way he never had before. The professor, a man who prided himself on punctuality and discipline, looked up from his desk, his expression unreadable. The clock on the wall ticked mercilessly, its hands pointing to twenty minutes past the hour. He glanced at Daniel, then back to the class, and without a word, his hand moved to the chalkboard. You've wasted enough of our time, the professor muttered, barely looking at him. Solve these before the class ends. It wasn't just any request. No, these were problems that had stumped even the best minds, equations that took hours of thought and careful calculation. The class erupted into laughter, the same familiar mockery that had followed Daniel through every lecture. But this time, Daniel didn't flinch. Instead, he walked to the board like he owned the place, picked up the chalk, and with a calmness that made no sense, started writing. The room, filled with murmurs and giggles, quieted down as he moved. First, no one noticed. But then, as the symbols and numbers began to flow from his hand with an ease that seemed impossible, the laughter died. The students leaned forward, squinting at the board, unsure of what they were seeing. Daniel wasn't panicking. He wasn't even sweating. He was solving the unsolvable. Daniel's hand moved with a fluidity that seemed almost unnatural. There was no hesitation, no fumbling. His fingers gripped the chalk firmly as he started to write, each number and symbol flowing from his mind with perfect clarity. The chalk danced across the board, leaving behind a trail of equations that defied everything the class had come to expect from him. The room was frozen. It wasn't just that Daniel wasn't panicking. He wasn't even looking at the board with the concentration one might expect. No, his eyes were scanning the entire room, his gaze casual, like he was solving a simple puzzle on a Sunday afternoon, not grappling with problems that even the top students were struggling to crack. The professor, arms crossed and a skeptical expression on his face, stood at the back of the room, his eyes narrowing as he watched Daniel work. The usual smirk had faded, replaced by something more dangerous, curiosity. His mind raced, trying to make sense of what was happening. He had never seen Daniel focus like this, let alone solve equations like this. Seconds ticked by, and then, just like that, Daniel was done. Two equations, one after another, solved in under a minute. Perfectly, flawlessly, the professor's jaw tightened as he stepped forward, his eyes scanning the board again, then back to Daniel, then back to the board. He couldn't believe it. He ran a hand through his thinning hair, trying to make sense of what he was seeing. The numbers added up, the logic was sound, but this was Daniel. The classroom was silent now. The murmurs that had filled the room only moments ago had been replaced by stunned disbelief. Some students exchanged uneasy glances, whispering to one another in hushed tones. Did he cheat? One student asked under her breath. No way. Another whispered, eyes wide in shock. That, that doesn't make sense. How did he? A few others shook their heads in disbelief, unsure of what had just happened. The same Daniel who couldn't get through a basic equation without his classmates offering help had just solved two of the most complex problems in under a minute. The professor, still staring at the chalkboard, his mind racing, finally spoke. Daniel, he said, his voice shaky. Where did you learn this? Daniel didn't answer immediately. He leaned casually against the board, a faint smirk playing at the corners of his lips. He didn't need to explain himself. The stunned silence in the room said it all. The professor, still grappling with the impossibility of what he had just witnessed, couldn't help himself. His curiosity surged, overcoming any doubt. If Daniel could solve these two problems, perhaps it wasn't a fluke. Maybe, just maybe, there was something more to the slacker of a student than met the eye. He stepped forward, his voice cutting through the thick silence. All right, Daniel, he said, his tone sharp and demanding. 
If you really know what you're doing, then solve this. He turned to the board and scribbled something that made the air in the room feel heavier. This wasn't just a complex equation, it was a mathematical mystery. An unsolved enigma tied to quantum decryption, something that had baffled the brightest minds for years. The problem had stumped cryptographers, researchers, and mathematicians alike. It wasn't even from the textbook. It was something deeper, something far beyond the scope of the class. The students shifted uneasily in their seats. They had seen Daniel struggle with basic algebra, with simple problems that required nothing more than basic knowledge. And now, the professor was asking him to solve something that had remained locked away in the minds of the world's greatest minds. There was no way, but Daniel wasn't phased. The same calm confidence returned to him. Without a second thought, he took the chalk again and walked up to the board, his movements smooth, almost instinctive. His eyes locked on the symbols and he began. At first, there was skepticism. Murmurs from the class, a few nervous glances exchanged. They expected him to pause, to hesitate. But Daniel didn't falter. His hand moved swiftly, but with precision. The numbers and symbols flowed as if they had always belonged there, as if they were just waiting for him to unlock their secret. The professor's eyes widened in disbelief. He had been watching Daniel with growing interest, but now, his mind was struggling to keep up with the speed and accuracy of the solution. The equations were falling into place one after another. There were no mistakes, no missteps, nothing but flawless logic and unparalleled skill. In less than five minutes, Daniel set the chalk down, the final line drawn with perfect precision. He turned around slowly, as if solving world-changing equations were the most natural thing in the world. The room was absolutely silent. Not even a single cough. Every student, every professor was stunned. The professor opened his mouth, but no words came out. His eyes remained fixed on the board, then drifted back to Daniel. His chest tightened, as if trying to comprehend the impossible. But before anyone could speak, the door to the classroom opened with a sudden force. A man stepped in, his sharp features matching the coldness of his expression. He wore a dark suit, the kind that immediately demanded attention, his presence cutting through the air like a blade. Without acknowledging anyone, his gaze went straight to Daniel. You need to come with me, the man said, his voice low but firm. The class looked on in confusion, their murmurs rising again, but the man's intimidating presence silenced them instantly. He didn't wait for Daniel to ask questions. Instead, he walked toward the board, eyes scanning the solution that Daniel had just written. The professor's eyes flicked between the agent and Daniel, his voice trembling. Who are you? he demanded. What do you want with him? The man's gaze never wavered from Daniel as he responded. Those equations you solved aren't just academic exercises, professor. They are of the utmost importance to us. Daniel felt a chill crawl down his spine. He opened his mouth, but the words stuck. The classroom had turned into something else entirely. A place where math wasn't just numbers on a board, but the key to something much larger, something dangerous. The agent's eyes locked onto Daniel's. Now, he said, gather your things. You're coming with me. The man in the suit didn't move, his presence still dominating the room, casting a shadow over everything. The students whispered amongst themselves, unsure of what to make of the situation. But the agent wasn't here to answer questions from the class. He turned toward Daniel, his eyes sharp and calculating, as if seeing him for the first time in a different light. What you solved, he said, his voice low but steady, wasn't just a puzzle. It wasn't just some abstract math problem. He paused, watching Daniel's confused expression closely. Those equations were linked to something far bigger. Government-level encryption systems. The kind that protect the most sensitive data in the world. Daniel's stomach churned. He didn't understand. He had solved the equations because they made sense to him, nothing more. But the agent's words were sinking in, slowly, painfully. The implications of what he had just done were beginning to crystallize. The agent continued, his tone now hard. Your solutions weren't just impressive, Daniel. They were groundbreaking. You've unlocked highly classified information. 
information that was never meant to be uncovered. The classroom was silent again. The professor, his face pale, stepped forward, his voice shaking with disbelief. Wait, you're saying Daniel just solved something that could break into, into government systems? His eyes darted back and forth between Daniel and the agent, struggling to grasp the enormity of what was being revealed. How, how is that even possible? He's just a student. There's no way. The agent reached into his jacket pocket and pulled out a small silver badge. The light from the overhead lamp caught it, reflecting an official seal. One that Daniel didn't recognize, but the look on the professor's face said it all. It was a government badge and not just any department. Department of Defense, the agent said with quiet authority, holding the badge up just enough for Daniel to see. You have no idea the kind of attention you've just attracted. We've been watching your work. And now that you've solved these equations, you've caught the attention of the highest authorities in the country. The professor, still struggling to process the situation, looked between the agent and Daniel, his mind racing. But he's just a college student. How can this, this kid have done something that no one else could? His voice was almost a whisper now as if hoping the agent would deny the possibility. The agent didn't answer right away. Instead, he gave Daniel one final, assessing glance. The weight of the moment pressed down on him, heavier than any textbook or equation he had ever encountered. He had solved problems, yes, but they were not just numbers. They were the gateway to something much darker, more dangerous than he could have ever imagined. Finally, the agent spoke again. Because he's not just any student. Daniel has abilities that go beyond what anyone could explain. And now we need H. Daniel followed the agent out of the classroom, the whispers of his classmates echoing behind him, but they felt like a distant murmur. His steps were automatic, his mind in a haze. The weight of the moment was too much, too overwhelming. Just an hour ago, he had been a normal student, a latecomer to class, with no idea that the simple act of solving two math problems would change the course of his life forever. As they walked down the hallway, the bright fluorescent lights overhead seemed to flicker, as if mocking him. The air felt colder, heavier, each step taking him farther away from the life he knew. The professor, still standing in the doorway of the classroom, watched him go, his face a mixture of awe and fear. He was helpless unable to comprehend what had just unfolded. They reached the exit, where a black SUV awaited. The agent didn't hesitate. He opened the door and gestured for Daniel to get in. The interior was cold, sterile, and devoid of any warmth. It felt like a world apart from the chaos of the classroom, a world where Daniel's every move would now be under scrutiny. As the SUV pulled away, Daniel could feel the eyes of the city on him through the tinted windows. His thoughts raced, but no answers came. What had he done? What was happening? The agent sat silently across from him, his gaze steady, unyielding. Daniel tried to meet his eyes, but it felt like trying to stare into a void. There was no escape from this, no turning back. The ride lasted longer than Daniel expected, and soon the car descended into an underground garage. Armed guards stood watch, and cameras tracked their every movement. The doors to the facility opened with a hiss, and Daniel was ushered into a large, high-security building that looked more like a fortress than anything else. The agent led him through a series of hallways, the cold, metallic walls reflecting the eerie silence. Daniel's heart pounded in his chest, his mind unable to process what was happening. They reached a small room, and the agent motioned for him to sit. A thick file was placed in front of Daniel, and the agent finally spoke. Your abilities are unique, the agent said. You've unlocked a level of encryption that we have spent years trying to crack. These problems you solved weren't just math problems. They were linked to national security. Quantum decryption. You've solved something that wasn't meant to be solved. Daniel felt his stomach drop. The weight of those words hit him like a ton of bricks. He had no formal training in advanced mathematics. He wasn't some genius prodigy. He had simply solved the equations because they made sense to him. It was instinct, nothing more. But now, he realized, it was far bigger than anything he could have imagined. The agent stood up, his gaze never leaving Daniel. We need you, Daniel. 
You have two options now, work with us or disappear. The words hung in the air like a death sentence. Daniel felt his throat tighten. This wasn't a choice. This was a command. There was no escaping the powerful forces that were now in control of his life. His mind raced. He had always coasted through life, never bothering to take things seriously. But now, he was faced with a decision that would change everything. Embrace this new reality, work for the government, become part of a world he didn't understand, or resist and face the unknown consequences. Daniel leaned back in his chair, his eyes staring blankly at the file in front of him. His life had just been turned upside down. In a matter of minutes, he had gone from an average student to someone whose knowledge could potentially alter the balance of power. The agent watched him closely, but Daniel didn't meet his gaze. The silence stretched between them, and Daniel's thoughts began to spiral. What if this was a mistake? What if he refused to cooperate? Would they erase him from existence? He didn't know. As the agent's footsteps echoed in the hallway, Daniel remained seated. The decision weighed heavily on him, his future uncertain, and for the first time in his life, he realized how much power one simple choice could hold. The story ended with Daniel staring at the cold, government-issued file in front of him. His life was no longer his own, and whatever path he chose would alter the world around him forever. He had no answers, only questions, questions that would haunt him long after the doors to the facility closed behind him.